Meet the Time Runners. This is Mark. I'm going to discuss a little bit about this uh, video that uh, goes into the trans light of a Tron arcade game. And so here is a picture of a Tron arcade game. And this trans light that you see right here is a static. It doesn't move. It's actually just a piece of plastic. And then behind that is a light fixture. And that lights it up when the game is on. Looks pretty cool. It's kind of neat to see this sort of thing that's you know behind this piece of plexiglass and it gives it sort of a depth uh, but you know this is just what they were able to do in the time when this particular machine was made 1981 and um so brent wooten a guy on facebook uh, if you want to look up his articles that he published first of all they're all in the tron arcade repair restoration and info resource page that was a mouthful um, I just typed Brent Wooten Tron here, and these came up. Yeah, anyway, he details how he took footage from the film and was able to come up with a, uh, a variation on the translite using actual film footage. Uh, and so I think it's you know an interesting read. I would go to Facebook. I'm not really going to cover all that. Uh, Brent uh, gave access to this uh, video that he prepared by uh, well you just basically had to ask him for it and he he gave it and uh i think he has parameters about it i'm not sure about those just go ask brent okay long story short i got a copy of it and uh i felt it was okay let me take take a quick look at the way that video looks we're gonna hit play here and you'll get to see uh, it in action it actually goes for five minutes and 19 seconds which is pretty hefty okay you may hear that that sort of, you know, base, and that's pretty cool. Um, you can see that there's like a kind of a glow here, and uh, there's there's a few effects that are done, you know, to give this a little bit of uh, an interesting look. Um, however, as far as the game goes, let's turn this off. Not accurate at all. So um, it's, you know, kind of an homage that's accurate to the film. So Brent spent a lot of time uh, isolating the video, you know, removing artifacts and other things and sort of getting it to where, you know, it was just something that was, you know, isolated and could be used and wouldn't be too distracting and it just repeats. It's pretty cool. But I was thinking, hey, I can take this just a little bit further because as you can see, the uh, actual uh, MCP cone here is is completely different basically i mean it, it does have these little dots here that apparently weren't in the film i'm gonna cut myself off on saying the word apparently let's try to see if we can do that um this is a little bit darker it's not purple there's a gradient and you know this this is looking different and so i set out to make some changes to the video so let's talk about how we got the video looking uh like this and then I got it to look like this, okay? Um, but easiest way to do that is just to do a little breakdown in Photoshop. Well, so these two guys right here, this is the audio track and the video track of Brent's video. I, I, don't, I don't know why I left this one open here. I must have been doing something else. Um, and as you can see, there's uh, not really anything that was done. It's, it, this is the way it was. Um, I added three layers, an adjustment layer a trans light background which uh, I took some video uh, I guess I get some photo yeah I took some photos from online so that I could have sort of a sample of the trans light and then superimpose it on top of this video and then this last layer right here is a uh, 1080p 35 millimeter digital grain which is uh, pretty cool it adds uh, you know that film look that you kind of get I mean in effect it is just noise but it is noise that people are familiar with when they, they're thinking of film I felt that this uh, video is too clean and it needed to sort of get that kind of movie look that it needed to match up with the uh, the translate okay so let's check it out now here the adjustment layer I'm going to turn on the whole thing and um, you can see that I uh, did some color changing and uh did i adjust anything i don't think so if you, if you do this that's all fine okay so let's let's turn these off and then we'll go through them one by one um okay so this 
this was the the major change is is uh, taking the base and making it match up with this background. So it's mostly red and some purple, and so uh, just using a little bit of the you know the controls here for change to color, and, and that's how I got that guy to go. If you uh, open this up, you can see that. It went from this color to this color, and then there's little adjustments and things like that. Um, I'm thinking I might share this this uh, project file so that you can get the video from Brent and then create the video, this video from that. Uh, I'm not sure. I, we'll see. Anyway, okay. Long story short, uh, that was the change color to the base, to the you know f sort of the field that you can see out there. The next uh, color change uh, is a little bit hard to see, but the uh, you know this this thing that's going up here, it's it's just sort of gets washed out, and so I uh, make some changes to make it less, I guess, flesh colored, and you know added some blues. If you look in here, uh, we went from a red to a blue, and on this one. We went from uh, any of the purple that was in there, we, we moved it to yellow. And then uh, when you have these guys turned on, you can see it's a lot easier to see this thing moving. When I have them off, and it's going, I mean, you can see it's red, but I felt like there's more colors in there, and it was just too washed out. So it could be a personal preference. I don't know. All right, what's the other guy? Uh, film color. So the film color, when that's turned on, brightens up the contrast and makes things appear a little bit nicer. It's just a standard filter. Uh, I believe that you can get from blue, blue FX. And I love it. I use it on everything. It's, it's great. So when you turn all these guys on, you can see that uh, the color scheme greatly changed. Uh, but the video is relatively unaltered. Okay, so now here's where it gets fun the translate background. If I turn off all of these and I just show you the translate background, I have like a, a perfect cutout so that uh, the video below shines through. I actually didn't uh, think about cropping this guy because I, you know, it, I just wanted to sort of make these in this direction. I don't, I don't really know why. You know what? That's a good question why I put them on top. But translight background is basically just cropped. If I remove that, then you can see that the hole for the video, you know, isn't going to come through. Um, I don't think there's anything else. I guess I adjusted the, I adjusted the the height and width here. Made the made the height just a little bit taller. And that's probably because the sample I used wasn't exactly you know perfect for this you know size. So no big deal. All right, so um, let's show all of these together. All right, we got all that. And then the last uh, piece was the uh, film grain. So when you turn the film grain on, you can you can kind of tell that there's quite a bit of noise added. You can really see it here. And you know if you have a real translate, there's a lot of noise um, as far as the the photograph's integrity. And so that's that was why I added that there um, and that was really it there's no uh, thing there's nothing really done to this uh, layer I believe the opacity is set to overlay and I have it at 85 percent and uh, 1080p 35 millimeter digital grain I think that you can get this online for free I think if you just search for these this exact spelling you'll find the page for it uh, shout out to Sarah Dici she uh, said the you know secret sauce to her videos is this particular type of grain, and you know I like it. I I do put it in some of my videos on occasion, and it does kind of add a little bit of authenticity, especially if you're shooting video in 24 frames per second. It really gives it that sort of film look. All right, so uh, I've rendered this out here, and I already have it already placed someplace up on uh, here. And if you hit play, you can see that the noise is the noise moves along, the video moves along. It's pretty cool, um, and I feel like this guy really does pay homage uh, to the way that real translate looks. Oh man, you know what? It's funny that the arcade game right next to me is like vibrating all crazy. Like, 
All right, well, I guess that's it for this particular video. If you have any questions about the edit, let me know. Again, don't forget, you can uh, join uh, the Tron Arcade Repair, Restoration, and Info resource page. Uh, you can just do a search for Brent Wooten Tron, and you'll find him there. And that's the end of our video. So you guys uh, subscribe if you like seeing things like this. I'm not sure if you do or not. Uh, it's kind of fun to take an existing video and then change it so that it, you know, meets your particular, you know, demand. So I needed it, I wanted it to look exactly the same, and uh, I think I pretty much accomplished that. I have yet to put in a 24-inch uh, monitor behind my Tron. I have actually two Trons. One of them is kind of a basket case that's in storage that I need to restore. And then the perfectly restored Tron that I have that... Uh, my arcade radio uh, host, co-host, the uh, Matarax, Adam, uh, restored and I bought from him years ago. All right, uh, that's the end of the video. Meet the Time Runners. Uh, again, you guys uh, have a good one and uh, see you next year.